Stephanie Milkey here, aka Keto Mom, or often called Mom, Sis, Steffi, Daughter, Wife, Aunt, and Friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is Mom. I should probably say Wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest if you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted, but when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Keto Mom page. We should just say the Keto Family page because you're going to start being on it more. Because we're better together. We are better together. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. My name is Stephanie, and your name is? I am Steve. And we are diving into the book. So yesterday, Steve joined us. Today, I said, come on, we're getting started. You want to know what's interesting is I have found that consistency is the most important thing for anything in life, but we're pretty good at doing something great one time, Right. but then it's doing it the next day that can be the challenge. That kind of goes into what we're talking about in the book, activity. I don't know what we're talking about. This well, is going to be great. I thought I would talk about what the book talks about, and then you can add in what you want right. to. So if you're brand new, post new below. I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Happy oh, Friday like if that. you're watching live. Yeah. happy. This is a great day. It is a great day. It's Friday. And we would love to connect with you if you are new. So post new <clears throat> in the comments. Uh, it is going to be an incredible day. We've got people coming over. We're going to grill. You're going to grill. Yeah, because yesterday we talked about joining our team, and that's one thing that I love about today is because there's people coming from, from Iowa and from uh, the cities who are coming here to hang out, and it's going to be great. We're going to have a great conversation. Community is so important. Yes. All I right. One more thing about community. Yes. I see all these names. People, good morning to everybody. Good morning. And I just want to say for those of you who have been committed to Keto Mom community for a while, if you comment, if you share. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. My tummy growled. I heard it. <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> all right. We are on chapter 10. If you're following along, we're going to start with get the action habit. Actually, this chapter has to do a lot with, well, it's very similar to the other books we've been doing, The Miracle Morning, Atomic Habits. Most books that we read that I'm hoping to read on here to go through are going to hopefully help you build better systems and habits and take action or actually create activity. I like Consistent activity. Consistent activity. So I will read a little bit to you. I'm not reading the story. So the book is great. I'm going to give you just a couple highlights and then we can chat about it. But it says, are you a man? or a woman, are you a person of action? Excellent ideas are not enough. An an only fair idea acted upon and developed is 100% better than a terrific idea that dies because it isn't followed up with. What are you laughing about? I'm sorry. Keep going. This is great. All right. It didn't say a man or a woman. But I like how you added that. I know. I liked how you added that. Well, a person. A person. That's great. Man Sorry. or a woman. It said man. I, I sometimes change the words because I, I would have written it differently. Yeah, I think that's great. All right. Nothing comes merely by thinking about it. You just intercede when you want to. All right. <laughs> okay. Here, here's the deal. The point is to give you something to think about. If you're brand new and you're like, I don't get it. We go through something, a book every day or something on your mindset. Why is that important? Because your mindset is so important to help you reach any goal in your life. I loved it yesterday because she said, she said, you're probably here because you've eaten too much food. Or you're like on a weight it's loss true. journey or a fat loss journey. And the reality is mindset is the base. You did right. this picture last couple of weeks ago and yeah. it was the, the triangle. And how many of you are familiar with like, oh, I don't like, like that. The, I'm not doing that. Don't symbol. do that. <laughs> Not doing that symbol. He the reality like the is it was like the pyramid. hierarchy needs, the hierarchy of needs, right. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yep. And I loved it because at the very bottom, the base, the foundation of everything was mindset. Yes. Mindset. Then it was like food then exercise and sleep or I don't know how it all It was worked. super cool. We should actually post that in the comments. I'll go find that. it and post in the comments because when I saw that, I thought that's brilliant. And most people just, they just scoot right past it. Right. All right. 
Here's the deal. You're going to fall into one of these two categories. As you're listening, you decide where you fall into. Success. The successful are... At, okay, so both the successful and just average people, there's two different people they studied. They fall into two different classes. The successful are active. We'll call them activationists. Ooh, I like that. The average, the mediocre, are call, they're unsuccessful and they are passive, so we'll call them passivationists. Is that how I would say that? Some big words. <laughs> we can discover a successful principle by studying both groups. Mr. Activationist is a doer. He takes actions, get things done, follows through an idea and a plan. Mr. Passivationist is a don't doer. He procrastinates doing things until it proves that he shouldn't or can't do it. You know what I liked is right up here when she was saying, as you study people, both the successful and the just average. Do you ref- I, How does that resonate? I actually you? wanted to ask people that too. When you say, so a lot of the books that we read are working on personal development. Anytime you read a book that's going to work on your mind, you're going to hear words like, are you average? Uh, they use the word loser a lot or mediocre. And I always wonder, what do people think about that? Because I, I feel bad actually saying it. I agree. I agree. I'm curious. How does that resonate with you? If someone were to call you just average. If they were to say you're just average, do you feel average? Maybe it doesn't bother you. But even when I read it, I'm like... But maybe some people don't know. And I also think in the world that we live in today with social media, we look at success differently than we would have before social media. It's so true. So like, no offense, but somebody who is like TikTok, an influencer, just because they got on TikTok early, people would say they're successful. And I would say that's not success to me. Yeah, it's interesting because it's the first time I think ever where it's actually overnight success, success can happen because we don't how do we define success right it's based on numbers i completely disagree right so as you all know like as the importance of mindset as is the importance of there is no overnight success there is legitimately consistency of doing the right things over and over i think when i read that that and this i might go off for just a moment the reality is like you're not just average like there is greatness inside of you because greatness made you right And I want to encourage you to step into that. And if you're okay, just hearing like, oh, I'm just average or I'm just okay. Well, I got all this stuff in my past. Like that's the reason why I'm just average. You got to break that crap off today because you truly are great. Like I want you to get a vision for your life and we want you to get a vision for your family. We want you to, we want you to raise up, to rise up, to become the best version of yourself. Cause it's important because when you play small, it does not help anybody right. around you. Like it's not a benefit to the world for you just sitting back on the sidelines. Right. So you could either say, instead of saying successful or average, which it's important to find people that are successful in any area of your life that you want to be better at. Right. So I shared the story of how I wanted to be a better mom. I found a mom that had three girls and I, and I asked her to be my mentor. If I wanted to lose 50 pounds, I would find somebody who already did it to ask them to mentor me or to guide me. If we wanted a better marriage, we would find somebody who has a better marriage than us to ask them to guide you. It's important to find successful people. But I think in general, when you're labeling yourself, you could think to yourself, do I have faith to step out and do things and take action or am I running my life out of fear? Yeah, I like that too because it made me think about, we've always kind of thought like success leaves Clues. Clues, but more importantly, success leaves footprints. And if you've got mentors in your life, how much better is it to walk in the footsteps of right. someone who's done the things that you're mm-hmm. striving for? Can I just brag on your dad for a second? Yeah. Because yesterday, uh, Stephanie's dad came by and he's been a paramedic for as long as I can remember him. He's amazing. And he truly is amazing. Like he's a SWAT guy. He's a paramedic. He's a police officer, like legitimately has saved millions of people. M- millions is probably too high, but hundreds of thousands of people's lives. lives. Like there's not committed. a time I don't go into our town and somebody says your dad saved my life, my sister, my mom. Like he came and like rescued us. <laughs> and it's interesting because we were Stephen got these cool awards in the mail yesterday. And he's like, these awards, like, what are you going to do with these? And I think so often people don't value um, what they do. Like, 
I think so often because I think about Rick and I think about the amount of lives that he's helped, but I don't know where you're at or what you've kind of seen. We don't watch the news, but the reality is it seems like the quality of people's standards seem to be getting lower. Right. And if you want to level up in life, you need to raise your standards. And when I think of Rick, I think of someone, I think of a man who's raised his standards where excellence in his job, excellence in his career is just the expectation. Like there is no... I'll maybe do this better later. And I want to encourage you because when I was listening to Rick, he sat by yesterday. When I was listening to him, it really made me think, and I would love to just, this is just a self-evaluation question. Like right. where in your life have you lowered your standards and what are you going to do today to raise those standards? Right. That's good. Super, super good. And living a life of excellence. That is, so if you were around in the beginning of the year, we picked a word like we would say, Hey, pick one word that will define your year. Right. And so my word was trust. And I worked through that. So I felt like God gave me a new word and the word was excellence, not out of perfection, but raising standards and doing thing with an ex doing things with a level of excellence that my husband says this, and I don't remember where you learned it from, but excellence honors God and inspires people. Do you do your life and the things that you, the choices and decisions you make every day with a level of excellence to inspire even yourself and others. It's good. Right? That's really good. So my word right now is excellence. I love it. My word is still stewardship. It's a great. Still focusing on that one. I want to be Did a you choose steward. a word? And let me ask, are you still grounded in that word? Like, and did you choose a word? word? What is Comment your word for your the word year? Down below. Did you forget? This is a good reminder. What did you choose for your word of the year? All right. Every day, thousands of people bury good ideas because they're afraid to act on them. And afterwards, the ghosts of those ideas come back to haunt them. Put these two thoughts deep into your mind. First, give your idea value by acting on them, regardless of how how good the ideas are. Unless you do something with it, you gain nothing. Second, act on your idea and gain mind tranquility. Someone once said that the saddest words of a tongue or a pen are those it might have been. Every day you hear somebody saying, had I gone into the business seven years ago, I'd, I'd sure be sitting pretty now. Or had I hunched, had I hunched, hunched? I had a hunch it would work out that way. I wish I had done something about it. A good idea, if not acted upon, produces terrible psychological pain. But a good idea acted upon brings enormous mental satisfaction. Got a good idea? Then do something about it. Use action to cure fear and gain confidence. Powerful. Um, I would say this, that that right there is worth everything. And so often, did you know that people's number one regret is because of inaction? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like people can go back and they're like, well, I did this like morally wrong. I did this wrong. I wish I would have done that or I should have said this. But the reality is the number I just was listening to a psychologist yesterday. He was saying the number one regret category happens to be inaction. And so uh, I just want to encourage you. We want to encourage you. That doesn't have to be your story. Like that doesn't where you have to end up just because it's been the past. I had a chance to talk to some friends yesterday at breakfast and we were talking about what are some of your regrets? What are some of the things? And it was all because of inaction of the past. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I wanted to, we wanted to encourage you with is like, let that be something where you can think about it. Say, all right, what did I learn from that? And what kind of advice would I give my best friend? And I think if you run away with those answers on some of those things in the past that maybe you didn't take action on, it doesn't have to be how your story ends. Yeah. And there you will find some of your greatest insights for you to really move forward with a positive intention. So good. So the question is, what idea or goal or little burning desire in your heart or your mind have you been wanting to do? but you haven't done. What is one thing you can do today to move forward in that idea? The only way you fail is if you quit, right? It's true. And so if you try something, you guys, something else about my dad is he has 101 ideas every single day. And so he'll call me up and he's like, what about this? Should we buy this? Should we do this? Should we move to Colorado and buy a town? Should we go across the world and start a horse ranch? He called us this morning and he's like, hey, I found Uh, campground. I think you could do horses there. Like he just is always thinking. Which I love. And throwing ideas out there. 
and one of them will stick because he's not afraid to talk about it. So we're, I was like, let's go look at it, Dad. Let's go look at the campground and see what it looks like. Yeah. So that should encourage you that it's okay to dream. It's yeah. okay to talk about those things. And you know what? When the time comes, you're going to you're gonna face that pivotal point of like, do I walk out in faith or do I just sit back in fear? Right. And there's so many things. So like we're going to go look at this campground with them. And you know what? If the financial aspect, it makes sense. If it if it looks good and if it's a best next step for them, like guess what? That's going to have to be something they'll have to walk out in faith. Right. Um, but the reality is, is every day you guys have the decision. You get the choice to choose that. Right. And every day, and even if we're talking about the reason why you came to the page, right? Like, what are you hoping for physically? What are your goals to feel better by next year? Giving yourself an adequate amount of time, but are you taking action on those things? Or are you just giving in to the, whatever comes my way, I eat. Whatever comes my way, I do without really owning your day and owning your own decisions. Yeah. Uh, what kind of, what do you want to leave them with? What do they well, really need to know? What do you really need to know? If you knew what you really needed to know, what would that be? I mean, most people come here because they're looking for... You know... Uh, what? I want you to know something. We said no a lot. Uh, just because you watch, whether it's us online or other people, and you might feel like they've got it all together, or we're like we've coached on this, or we read a lot, or we have mentors, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I don't have days where I have to legitimately get into my mindset and make myself do things. And in fact, the last couple of days, in my mind, I've been like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to. Uh, but I also have read enough books, and I've listened to enough podcasts, and I do the actions no matter what. I do them no matter what. You do. So even when I'm crabby or even when I just, for whatever reason, I something throughout that day hit me, I just do it. Sometimes you just have to do it. That's so good. I don't know. Okay. So me sitting here is just that. Because I thought I felt great yesterday. I was like, oh, I added value yesterday. I helped my wife. It made right. her happy. Um, that's great. But then today I was like, oh, you know what? Today's not my day. Yeah. She's going to do it. She's going to do great. It's like she always does. And then she brought over this chair and she said, we're going to do this together. And I thought, oh, I don't want to, but it's building a muscle. So hopefully that can be an encouragement to you. And I would just say in take that, action on something, take action on something. And for me, that's where the accountability and the support comes from. And that's why we love this community. Right. So uh, if you haven't done so, hit the share button tag a friend, add a friend, invite a friend to check out these pages, go to Keto Mom Secrets, find some more information if you need it. Yep. Knowledge isn't always power. It's inspiration that flips the switch. And it's always better when you have another person to do it with. Take action. And that's why I'm thankful for you for letting me share with all of you. <laughs> all right. We hope you guys have a great Friday. Uh, continue to tune into the page. We'll come back with some different tips and keto tricks. Look through the page. If you need some recipes or send me a message and we'll answer any question you have based on whatever question you ask. All right. It'll be great. So have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.